for quite a long time when we were doing these Michigan mailbags, uh, I would put the question out on a Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I'd have somewhere like 25 to 30 questions. We're doing a first today because this is the first time that I am limiting the amount of questions asked in the mailbag because we got double that. 63 responses. My apologies. But let's answer your Michigan football questions in this dire part of the season on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Thursday. We are back and doing it, not just the Locked On Wolverines podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're your team every day. Second uh, week in a row with a mailbag. It used to be an every weekly thing, and then we had to kind of die it down, and uh, now we're bringing it back. That's where we're at. I'm your man on the ground as a whole publisher of Wolverine's Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. Let's get right into it. We've got a ton of questions. I think I'm answering about half, maybe even like 25. Overwhelming amount. Let's get right to it with our leaders and best, starting with James Crudup at James Crudup 6. How would you evaluate Ron Bellamy? If you were the head coach, would you bring him back? Um, here's the thing with Bellamy. Number one, he is an excellent recruiter. And I know that it hasn't always necessarily panned out amazing in terms of that. But I mean, he's, he's responsible for the, the haul they've gotten. He's been responsible for some, a lot of the in-state guys. He's got a ton of, uh, a lot of these guys talk to Bellamy, not necessarily Bryce Underwood, but a lot of the others in state, right? That's, that's part of his responsibility as a former coach and recruiting is part of it, right? In terms of the on-field, it's not like he's had uh, some crazy, amazing talent to work with. So um, I know there's a lot of people that probably look at the wide receiver position and say unacceptable. They're not incorrect, but when you you don't have a single four-star receiver in the room at the moment, I, I, will, I shouldn't say a single, you have one single one, and that's Tyler Morris, was never meant to be a focal point. And otherwise, you've got uh, some... Well, I guess Amarian Stewart and Channing Goodwinner, uh, kind of those tweener three, four stars, but freshmen, like, like we've talked about before, you don't really typically expect freshman receivers to play that much. Um, they make big jumps going from year one to year two. But um, as far as the rest of them, you know, Kendrick Bell, Peyton O'Leary, uh, Samaj Morgan, uh, Frederick Moore, and Amarian Walker, who's been injured lately, you're not dealing with like surefire things, right? You're you're dealing with uh, three stars, and part of it is the quarterback position. So it's it, it's hard to really evaluate him in terms of the on-field product at the moment. I thought he did a good job with uh, Cornelius and Roman, right? So it's just a matter of I mean, but there there are issues. I'm not saying there's not issues, right? Separation's long been a thing, and you'd like to see some progress there. And maybe if Michigan does decide to, to kind of go back to the well in terms of a, uh, an offensive, if they decide to go with another offensive coordinator, which I believe they will, uh, I think maybe then you start looking at a guy with some wide receiver experience. Then again, Michigan had Josh Gaddis, and it wasn't much different, and he had the wide receiver experience. Josh Barr, if this season of football was one of the Star Wars movies or shows, which one would it be and why? It's funny, I saw this, and then I tried to ponder it, and then my brain got jumbled, so then I had a hard time with it. Um, all right, which, which one would it be? Uh, I, I would say probably, and this is going to sound more like a dig than, than it is in my mind. I'm going to say Attack of the Clones, the episode two. Why is that? Because... If you love Star Wars, you still love it, but it's hard to look at, but it still maybe has a special place in your heart. I love Attack of the Clones, unironically, which is weird because I hated it when I first uh, got into Star Wars, which wasn't that long ago. Uh, I'd seen it originally kind of back in, um, right after it came out, but I didn't really sit down and watch it until it was like 2016-ish. And then I was like, this is abysmal. And then yet when I want to watch one of the prequels, I tend to go to Attack of the Clones out of the three. So it's kind of that same thing, except for I don't think anyone's going to write home about this season. It's not going to be like, let's look at the years of Michigan football past and turn on the USC game. I don't think that's going to happen. That USC game to me, you should have felt a sense of elation 
coming out of that because of what, uh, you know, it was still a ranked on ranked matchup at the time. Doesn't matter if it's at the time, but still like the feeling of like this maybe salvaged the season. Certainly it changed my mind going from, I don't know if I said on the podcast, I was certainly saying mine glows doors. I didn't think Michigan was going to make a bowl game. Then they beat USC and it changed my mind. Now they still got to prove that, but still. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to stick with because everything else doesn't really seem like it fits. My brother in metal, Michael Wolf at Elmwolf21, can the coaching staff have a good enough plan to keep it close with Ohio State? Absolutely. I absolutely think that's a possibility. It, it has to be, A, they have to be perfect in terms of that, and oh, it shouldn't have to be perfect, perfect, right? Like, it's the fo- game of football isn't perfect. They just have to have a good plan, and being able to execute that plan is a big part of it, right? Um, and I don't think the plan should be using your weaknesses, right? That, this is why, like, okay, the pass game worked on the first drive, for Michigan against um, Indiana. But what's Michigan's biggest weakness? The pass game. So to come out slinging it, I understand if it starts to work, then you're like, oh, all right, okay, cool. But it's still Michigan's weakness. So they're going to need something out of their weakness, but also I would try to find more imaginative ways to get the run game working because that is where you are technically better. Uh, What do you want to see the Northwestern game in the Northwestern game to have a glimmer of hope? I don't think anything from Northwestern is going to change what I think is going to happen in uh, the Ohio State game. But what I would like to see is just the run game kind of getting back into it because it's not been up to standard the last couple weeks. That would probably be it. And the defense just being a bit more consistent and some of the lessons learned by Wink Martindale continue to be learned. Uh, All right, final question in segment one. Uh, Weirdly, we're just with the OG4 here. Uh, Jimmy Whitner, Jimmy Whitner one. Is there a transfer quarterback that you would like Michigan to go after? Uh, not yet. Cause there's really, only, there's no one in the transfer portal. I mean, I certainly Miller Moss goes in the transfer portal. I'd, I'd like to see a guy like him. Um, I know there's some, some kind of lower level guys. I haven't done enough homework to see kind of obviously had the, uh, um, UNLV quarterback who could command something, right? Like he was very good, but you also have to question if a guy gets into the portal after week four. If uh, that's a guy that you want at Michigan, I'd say no. So there's that. Uh, number two, what are your early thoughts on the Northwestern game? Uh, I don't have any yet. I haven't really put, uh, given any thought to it. Michigan should win the game. And this is probably Michigan's only chance to have a potential blowout win if they do things correctly. But if you watch out, or if you don't watch out, rather, uh, Northwestern can beat you. It can beat you handily because we've seen them do that to Maryland. Uh, certainly guys like AJ Henning are going to want that. And, uh, David Braun would want this as a signature win, even though Michigan's not that great. Number three, where is Zuri? Can she come say hi? Let's see. Zuri, come here, Zuri. Come on. Here she comes. Let's see if she'll get up on camera. She's over here. All right. Come over here for the people listening. This is no fun. If you're watching, then you get to see a puppy. There she is. There's the puppy. Let's see if I can get her. Ugh. Try to get her up on the there she'll she'll join us up on the lap all right we're gonna and she's probably gonna start climbing me uh all right we're gonna continue on we got tons of questions left starting with our victors valiant we'll get to them here in just a moment but before we do get ready to tackle the nfl season or nfl action rather with FanDuel, america's number one sports book because right now new customers can bet five dollars Get 150 bucks in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with 150 bucks in bonus bets if you your first $5 bet wins. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, we're trying to do this show with a puppy. Uh, If you're listening, you can't see. I've got Zuri on my lap. And uh, she likes to try to block my head as she asks for more attention even though she's already getting plenty of attention. Um, so, <laughs> uh, she's a party puppy though. She's up for anything. 
and she's going to keep knocking on the mic here, which is right here. All right, so let's continue on with our Victor's Valiant. By the way, I wanted to mention this cool jacket. I mean, I, I could have worn this yesterday, uh, or not yesterday, tomorrow, and I probably will for the home field of it all. Uh, but this is my new home, the home field jacket I have been raving about, and it just kind of came in the mail today. Let's start off with Jim at Jim in the North. Do we think we ditch Campbell in the offseason? Uh, I do. I, I, I don't know if ditch is necessarily a word. I don't know if he'll be re reappropriated. I think we're going to lose Zuri. There we go. Uh, but uh, I don't expect him to be the offensive coordinator next year. Um, and we'll just see how that transpires, if that transpires. Uh, number two, will fundamentals improve next year? I have to imagine they will because I just feel like they'll, they'll, they'll put more of an onus on it. I think that there was not just, I always use the word hubris with uh, Wink Martindale. It's not necessarily just Wink Martindale, right? It's obviously it's, defensively lots of fundamental work needs to be done offensively i think sharon will be a little bit more hands-on out of necessity it's kind of the in it's kind of the reverse of the jim harbaugh hey get your hands off i think sharon needs to get his hands more on uh has misuse wrecked the don's draft status absolutely because he's got so much more to his game than is than we've seen it and that might that may still help him get drafted but I don't know, like, I think he could have gone from a first, second round type, even without the production, if Michigan just would have used him more smartly. Uh, he, he's a Jameer Gibbs type without the ability to slink into the middle of the field the same way as Jameer Gibbs. Because uh, Gibbs has a lot more, like, essentially Blake Corum to his game that Donovan's tried to get. Michigan should be running him more outside, not necessarily full outside, not, you know, sometimes I feel like they were trying to run him too much uh, all the way to the edge and he's waiting for his blocks to uh, set up. This goes back to last year and it just seems like those blocks always failed uh, due to his patience. He's kind of a guy that you want to run more just off tackle, but not necessarily all the way to the edge uh, or maybe even, you know, off guard would be where I would look at it. And then obviously his, it, it's inexplicable that they haven't used him in the past game. What do we need to do to fix the O-line? Uh, just consistency, I would say. And obviously, there's just some players, and you're about to mention, you say, why, Evan Link? Goodness, why? Evan Link was starting to kind of look better, only to have his worst game yet. Against one of the best pass, the, it's the best pass rush Michigan seen all year. CJ West, if you remember going back to the transfer portal uh, in the offseason, and he's an interior guy, not an exterior guy, so it doesn't really apply to Evan Link, but... Um, you, you'll remember me saying how badly I wanted CJ West to join Michigan and now he's just an absolute beast for them. But, um, yeah, I, I think that the, the fundamentals part that you mentioned, that's a big part of it. Consistency and, uh, you get better at football by playing football. So I think that that will help for the guys who will be returning and some of the guys who thought maybe they're going to the draft, probably not so much. And then I think just getting a couple more bulldozers. Uh, either the the guys that they've already recruited stepping up or through the transfer portal will help. James Kovalevsky at Coach underscore Kovo, Steve Dace on Michigan Podcast said, Michigan is prepared to drastically increase NIL spending. Do you have any indication on the strategy on how to divvy up that money between retaining current foundational players, high-profile transfers, and an income uh, incoming high school players? I don't, really, to be honest. Um, but certainly they're more aware of how to handle that, right? Like, They've already been doing the latter parts. It's, uh, or sorry, the former parts, but the incoming high school players is the part that they hadn't really got into that they now kind of start, are starting to more so. So that's kind of a, a positive development as far as that's concerned. Perry Mitchell at Perry Mitchell 08. This is nitpicking because we've seen them be better, but poor, the poor play of Wolf and Golden just killed this team on Sunday. Do you think Dusty May can do anything moving forward to work around them if that happens again? Um, I mean, I, I don't. Ex you, I think it's just one of those things. You don't expect them to both be as bad as they were. Golden has just been a non-factor, which has been shocking. He's supposed to be Michigan's best player that they got. Uh, Wolf was obviously very good in uh, the first game. Maybe he just came down to earth a little bit. Uh, but I, I think that. I mean, you just hope you get more from the other players, right? Like it just things went kind of south, and that's where your point guard needs to kind of take over whoever that might be. And I'd love to see if they get into, and part of their thing was the rebounding, of course, but from the scoring perspective, you know, maybe you start seeing more and more LJ Kason 
uh, Kaysen, however you say his name, as the it all goes forward, I think would be the thing there. The Recon Raider at Hamstand 87. What's your final projection from the Michigan recruiting class ranking? Give Zuri a snoot grab for me. I won't be able to do that on camera right now. I will do that. I do it 18 times a day. Um, that and I bite her. She doesn't like being bitten. <laughs> um, but she bites me, so that's she's a bitey puppy, even at eight years old. Uh, final prediction for the Michigan recruiting class ranking. Um, I, I think top 10. It's hard to say, right? Like, it, it's, everyone's still basically, I, I understand there's outlets out there that say Bryce is not coming and he's, he won't be coming. He never was coming. Uh, those close to it still insist it's about a coin flip, uh, even as of today, Thursday. Um, there, there have been, uh, there's like a small step, uh, potentially small, hopefully still small setback right now. Uh, but hopefully they, it, but I'm still being, uh, I still get the insistence it's a 50 50, essentially 51 49. Um, with that in mind, uh, it's hard to really evaluate because if they get Bryce Underwood, I think they've got a better chance. I, Derek Meadows is not inextricably tied to Bryce, uh, to Bryce Underwood. But obviously that helps, right? And I could see them also getting another top, top flight receiver who's just like, uh, hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it that's the difference between a top five and a top 10 class. I think they'll be around 10. Maybe they could, you know, if, if some of these guys who are visiting other places this weekend end up getting lured away, then that may be drops. But so at the worst, top 15. At best, probably top five. Uh, Jacob Shavoria at Shavoria, how does last year's uh, view... How, how does last year compare, rather, I don't know where view came in, to this year in views and listens, um, as far as the podcast is concerned, uh, significantly down. <laughs> um, and this, the, the, the website, as far as the reading goes, that's way more down. It, 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 that's the difference between uh, people caring and wanting to soak in everything and people not caring. Um, and then on top of it, last year was our best year yet because of uh, my connection to Connor Stallions. Not that a lot of you knew that and me being able to report on that stuff. So um, regardless, uh, there's a reason why we're covering recruiting and it's because you look to the future you know, when things in the current aren't going that great. So that's kind of helped stem some of it. Do, do see as and ticket holders get a playoff game tickets or... Uh, at least first dibs on them. I have no idea about anything with ticketing at all. Uh, like it's so far out of my purview. How many years do you give Sharon if we miss the playoffs again next year? Uh, I I would give him th I I'd give Sharon three years total. See what he can do. Don't don't pull the people that want to pull the plug. Did you not understand? That's how you become Florida. You got to give him the full three years to to get his to make his tweaks. You're right. Like this, he's a first year head coach. He made his hires. Things that haven't worked out in year one. Let him make his tweaks. Let him play with the transfer portal with the full year, all that kind of stuff. And then if it doesn't work next year, it just depends, right? If they're six and six again next year, maybe you do pull the plug after year two. Uh, but uh, if, if it's, let's say they miss it, but they're like nine and three, then, you know, it all depends on what those three games are. Then, you know, you, you probably give them another year, but maybe you don't. Ohio State fired day if he chokes again this year versus Michigan. I think probably, yeah, but I thought so after 22 and 23, and that hasn't been the case. So uh, I'm not the one at William Cawthor 9 with uh, multiple here. If, uh, if only J.J. had come back for the last year's team, how much different do you think this season would be? Significantly. I think they very well would be in the potential of being a uh, undefeated team if J.J. came back. He's that good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you, so how would you clarify... Sharon's first year uh disappointing but not surprising I think I I, I always I, I didn't talk about it much but I always felt like this was a possibility it just is not what I thought was a probability even though here we are I was wrong mea culpa do you follow any of the success of other sports at Michigan I I, I mean yes and no basketball obviously cover that as well um not as closely as football uh, and yeah, you know, I'll, I'll pay attention, but not necessarily, uh, go to and do a lot as far as that's concerned. What's your gut feeling on Underwood and what will you do? Will they do if they don't get him? They'll have no QB commit. I'm sure they'll get a QB commit one way or another. They'll find one and they'll flip one NIL and Michigan name will do enough to do that. Um, my gut feeling is still, it's a coin flip as of right now. 
not based off of just general vibe, but based off of actual intel coming from that camp. And that's not Connor per se. It's others that are close to that camp telling me things. So, um, like I said, I have multiple irons in the fire. So, um, it's, uh, just kind of getting some Intel coming out of there. It's still, they, th- I, I talked to some people that say that they still think he's coming to Michigan, regardless of, uh, the fact that he wants to go to LSU. Others aren't as bullish. So we'll find out. That's the whole fun with recruiting. Uh, Clark at blue for life eight to finish this out in segment one, uh, or segment two, rather, who do you think is the most desirable name for an offensive coordinator? If his change is made after the season, I could not tell you, I don't pay enough attention. Uh, to, uh, who, you know, who, who's the, cause if I'm, if I'm Michigan, I want an, an established guy, not necessarily an up and coming guy, which is hard because an established guy probably wants to be a head coach. Maybe you can get someone from the NFL that, uh, but that's usually not a great place to be. Maybe you get a head coach who's demoted. Maybe you pay a guy like Joe Moorhead a bunch of money to say, Hey, you're going to make more as offensive coordinator at Michigan instead of being the head coach at Akron. Kind of hard to say. Um, all right. Let's continue on. We've got uh, probably more questions than we have time to get to, uh, but we are going to try. Uh, again, most of these are people who have asked questions before. I added a couple who have not just to get you in, but we are not getting to everybody's question in this show. This is the first step time that we're doing that. Uh, so anyway, we'll continue on here in just a moment. But before we do, listen, there's live events galore, whether it's sporting events. Uh, you got basketball coming up tomorrow. Uh, if, if you want to go to Little Caesars Arena for Maverick City Music tonight, that's one thing that you can do. Uh, and the best way to get in the door is through Game Time. Now, Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only the incredible deals and great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Uh, Like I told you yesterday when uh, Sarah and I were still discussing the possibility of going to Maverick City Music tonight, I found uh, tickets in the section that we wanted to sit in about the row we wanted to sit in for $40 less than retail because they've curated the deal. They found the right seats. It's absolutely an amazing situation to go with game time. Plus, they're all in pricing. You toggle that feature on. It shows you the total up front, so there's no surprise at checkout. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, some of these here in segment three are still a part of the Victor's Valiant, but uh, we bumped them just to make a little more time here uh, with the segments and all of that. Brett Beyer at Brett, or Brett, I don't know if it's Beyer or Bayer, but uh, we'll go Bayer, Beyer. I'll say both just to cover all bases. If Underwood is predicating his commitment based on whether Michigan upgrades its OC and play caller and is only committing a few weeks as I hear, does more take over play calling as rumored? Does Campbell get the ax really soon in anticipation of his commitment? I don't think it necessarily has to be a public scenario, right? So that that's probably all I can say on that is if they do decide to, uh, if Bryce is, let, let's just say hypothetical, he has not done this, so don't take it and run with it saying that I'm saying that he did this. This is not what happened or is happening. This is a hypothetical. But let's say um, hypothetically, uh. Bryce Underwood is t- tells Sharon Moore, I will commit to Michigan if you have a different offensive system, different offensive coordinator. I, I do believe that they would, Michigan would say, yes, we'll ha- we will do that for you, but we'll handle it after the regular season's over. Okay. I do believe that would be the case. They're not going to let a high end guy uh, hold the program hostage, especially in the middle of the season. So I'll put it that way. Uh, Anton Sismita Mangala at Sismita Mangala. Imagine if this year's team had last year's schedule and last year's team had this year's schedule. I still think 2023 Michigan would have gone undefeated and won the Natty, but this year's team would have had more time to improve. I think part of that's true, but remember, they got out to a really slow start last year. They did not look like they were firing on all cylinders, though. Every game was still basically done at halftime. It would have been a lot harder to face a, a Texas team, 
Uh, I mean, the, the Texas team from last year, yeah, they could have beaten them. Um, but Texas beat Alabama uh, in week two. Uh, so I, I, I would be remiss to sit there and say, yeah, yeah, no, they, they, they'll have, they'd have figured it out. It would have been, it would have been what it was. Um, but I think that it certainly would have benefited this year's team because they're just, they would have had a lot more time to fix a lot of the issues and figure out what the identity is and roll with it. Whereas they've kind of changed uh, offensive identities 18 times this year. Carter Carlett at Carter Carl, five, three, nine, four, seven, any intel on potential transfers? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, I'm assuming you mean incoming. Not yet. It's too early. Uh, George Paul Lewis at G13 Lewis after the season is over, who will be getting fired? I can't answer that <laughs> even if I wanted to. Uh, and I don't, and part of it is I don't know. I do. I think that they're going to make a change at a offensive coordinator. I do have an informed, uh, opinion there, but it doesn't mean it's a sure thing. Uh, but, um, nonetheless, I, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Uh, all right. To the blue crew, Tim at Tim one nineteen eighty eight four fifty six. What is the biggest thing Michigan needs to do to be better next year? Um, load up on offensive skill players, change uh, at least the offensive philosophy to being one that matches the skill players more, and uh, be more cohesive as far as that. Defensively, just hope that the they're smarter play calling wise, and experience kicks in for those inexperienced uh, guys. And it's I mean they got some holes to fill up front, obviously too. There's a lot. There's still a lot. But they got talent. That's the good news. Bo Wolverine at Allen J underscore 14 is pl- uh, the problem play calling or execution of said plays. Yes. <laughs> it's all of said. There have been times where the play calling I thought has been good and the, they, they didn't execute in other times, which is more often. I'm not particularly happy with the play calling itself. So there's that. The Hurled at Hurled The. Odds of players coming back. Rod Moore, Jay Sean Barham, Derek Moore, Ray Sean Benny, question mark. I'd say a pretty solid odds that all four come back. Um, I mean, Moore could potentially test the NFL draft waters. I think he'd maybe be like a fifth round guy. That's in Derek Moore. Rod Moore, uh, I feel like he needs the year to rehab. Otherwise, he's just asking to be a fifth or sixth round guy. Uh, Barham and... Uh, I. Benny's been good and certainly could test the waters, but I think that he'd bode well to come back and be a starter next year. And uh, Jay Sean Barham, I think, uh, probably is wouldn't be drafted at this juncture. So, very big mea culpa there. Smoothie at Nick Brownell, 02. What's your thoughts on the future of the safety position with Brandon Hillman and Mason Curtis looking solid in the snaps they've gotten recently? I still think the position's good, especially you get Rod Moore back. You still got Jaden Mangum. Um, I still think it's it's a solid position in terms of that. And I, plus, I think you look at the uh, the recruits they're bringing in. It looks sky high, even with uh, lose, losing Ivan Taylor, most likely. So uh, I think that uh, it's it's a great position, and it's obviously there, there's guys who have come on strong lately, and that's good. But I st- you don't forget about. The fact that more could come back and don't forget that Jaden Mangum has just not been able to play due to something off field that we don't know about. Finishing us out. I've got less than a minute to do so. JD Heb at J or JD Heb one at JD Heb one. Here is one. I've been wondering myself all season long. What would Michigan's record be right now if we had last year's coaching staff? So slightly different on the variation on the last one um, that we had there. Uh, last year's coaching staff, I think it would probably be, I mean, instead of five and five, I think you'd be looking at uh, either eight and two or, uh, right, do I have that right? Eight and two or seven and three. I couldn't do math suddenly. <laughs> um, just because I think they'd be smarter about the way they use the personnel. And uh, I think that they would have, figured out so, uh, a way to make uh, what they are doing at the quarterback's position have worked a lot earlier. That's my take on that. All right, that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back Friday, not with a preview because there's no game to preview. But anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace. Peace.